everybody. Thank you for being with us. I'm Rebecca Hyland and welcome to Groundwork. I am running for the state representative seat of the 90th district, which is a large portion of Wallingford and Middlefield. And I have with me Liz Linehan, state representative for the 103rd House District, and I would like to say thank you so much for giving us this time, especially as campaign season is kicking off. Thank you for having me. This is really fantastic. And you are running again? I am. I'm running for my fourth, ter fourth term. Fourth so term. We're talking a lot about uh, gun issues now, right? Yeah. Um, and that is on the national level, and, and there's been a bevy of mass shootings, um, and again, once again, I in, think we're in at elementary like school. 355 mass shootings in the first in half of the year, 2022 or something. Yeah. It's, it's outrageous. Uh, and so I'm often asked, what are you doing for gun control? And, uh, here in Connecticut, so in Connecticut, do you know where this, um, third, we have the third strictest gun laws in the nation and we are the third safest state in the country. Yeah, so I was just looking at some of the, the details and the research on this. Right. And, and Connecticut's good. We're really good. But, uh, but that doesn't say we're without issues. And, um, and it doesn't mean we can't go backwards. Yeah, and we have to be very careful with that as well. Yeah. But one of the things that you'll hear on the national level is, and let's get back to mental health. Well, it's not about guns, it's about mental health. Well, it's, let's be honest, it's about both. Okay. Of course. Um, but one of the things that we did in 5001, uh, I created a set of trauma coordinators through the RESCs. The RESCs are regional education service centers. Uh, and these trauma coordinators will go into um, school districts and they will train people on trauma that they're most likely seeing uh, in their area, right? So um, an urban trauma um uh, coordinator would be someone who talks about seeing gun violence, um, who talks about the things that, that are traumatizing to children based in that geographical area that might look something like something totally different. But the aim of that is twofold. One, yes, it's to help with mental health and trauma and, and getting kids where they need to be in order to be good, healthy adults. Right. But it's also about mass shootings, it's about school violence. Because if we look at the trauma associated with these young people, right, who are committing these mass shootings, there's some sort of trauma in their lives, they grew up like this, and they're, they're typically under the age of 25, right, then we have to look at how we can stop those from happening. I always go back to the stabbing death of Marin Sanchez at Jonathan Law. Yes. This is something that I, I just explained to someone today. She was stabbed for turning down someone for a, for a prom date. And this was a young person who could not handle rejection, didn't know how to voice their feelings, and in his life had some sort of trauma that really underscored that and took him over the edge. If we're going to stop these school shootings, school violence, mass shootings, we need to start working on how to teach kids how to handle their emotions to address trauma early. This is something that uh, strikes home for me because I'm a former public defender and I represented juveniles yeah. for a long time, charged in criminal court for juvenile crime. I was a public defender in the state of Virginia. One of the most important things that we can do to reduce crime is to prevent it. It's not to punish it. Mm -hmm. That's not to say that there isn't room for punishment. Right. There needs to be consequences, but we have to understand that consequences aren't going to stop it from happening in most circumstances. And we also have to understand, and you'll know this as, as much as anyone, that adult consequences don't work for children. Right. This they is, don't, they they don't, don't work, work for most adults. <laughs> That's I mean, true, right? That is true. Deterrence is, is not a strong result of punishment. It, right. it is one of the goals of punishment, but it doesn't work as well as people would like it to. No, it doesn't. And that's because if you think about it, I mean, cr crime is the result of a lot of things, a lot of very complex factors. Um, but 
in and of itself, crime is irrational. It's illogical. And, and no one sits and thinks, hmm. How can I get myself sent to prison? Yeah. Is it, yeah. So if <laughs> I steal right. that... Am I going to get three years or seven years? Because if it's seven, if it's seven mm-hmm. I'm not going to do exactly. it. It's not how it works, right? You're right. And it's not to say, again, that there needs there absolutely have to be consequences uh, right. for crime. But if we want to be very serious about actually preventing people from becoming crime victims, which that's the goal. You don't deserve to be a crime victim. I don't deserve to be a crime victim. Right. Nobody should be a crime victim. Then we need to be honest about how that happens. And, you know, one of the things that um, I'm really proud of that came out of this session, uh, I introduced a bill that addresses the catalytic converter thefts. Ultimately, my bill wasn't the one that was passed, but elements of what I wrote were put into the bill that did pass. And we are making it more difficult to sell catalytic converters. No one is going to want to cut a catalytic converter out of a car if they have no place to sell it. So we passed this legislation, and now my office is working with legislators in Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania to share with them what we did so that you can't have an easy ride to get somewhere close to sell that catalytic converter. The rates are already dropping. Part of that also, by the way, needs to be more um, boots on the ground for police. Visible police presence in smaller communities. Well, they're so overextended. Right. So let's hire more police. So another bill that I put in um, was to give more funding to the local car theft task forces. Now, Wallingford, I don't believe, has uh, has one yet, but hopefully this will entice them to do that. My other two towns, Cheshire and Southington, did that. They've been extremely, extremely extremely successful. Well, this has been a fantastic conversation, and I'm sure we'll keep going, but we are running out of time. I want to thank everyone for watching Groundwork with me, Rebecca Highland. I am running for state representative of the 90th district, and I hope to see you at the polls on November 8th. And I want to thank Liz Linehan, our guest, uh, for being here and sharing her wisdom with us. Thank you.